Right, so we can flip that one more Ooh. time and look at that. Oh my God. Right? Looks so good. <laughs> right, so that's super lovely. Here in the Food 52 video studio with Ivan Orkin. That's me. One of the preeminent ramen chefs in New York. One of the most well-known ramen chefs in Japan, I'd say also. Yeah, no, don't be, don't be <laughs> modest. I'm here with like a ramen, a ramen hero today, so I'm very excited. Oh, I'm uh, excited today too. we're cooking uh, okonomiyaki. Right. And we're featuring a recipe that's in your new cookbook. Yes, my new cookbook, I'll just show you. How would you describe okonomiyaki to people who might not know what that is? Well, I mean, the, the simplest way is that it's a savory pancake from Japan, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a pancake, usually uh, it's a very simple, quick batter you know, filled with cabbage. And then the world is your oyster. Right, you know, those are my favorite types of recipes is when there's sort of a, a basic thing that you can work off of and then almost a blank slate to get as creative as you want to. So for today, we're gonna to be working with cabbage and also this sliced pork belly. Mm -hmm. But at home, you can incorporate any number of vegetables or meats into your open Yeah, pancake. sure. I mean, this is, as I say in the book, it's a, it's a, it's a, a refrigerator clearing recipe. Yeah. You know, you're like, I got like little nubs of zucchini and, 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 and a little piece of onion and the carrots. Pull it all out, shred it up, mix it in the batter, throw it in your pancake, don't be shy. You know, the best part of cooking sometimes is messing something up because it, well it is because you well, are obviously you well we talk about what we about mistakes right mistakes are important yeah um, because you learn from them and I think that the the one of the good things about messing up in the kitchen is especially if you burn something and it's embarrassing you never forget so you need to remember that horrible feeling when everybody in the whole room is just sort of realizing they're not having dinner it's a terrible feeling yeah. so you know the next right. time you do better that's how you learn right All right, let's get started. So essentially, this uh, okonomiyaki is a batter with vegetables in it mm -hmm. that then be cooked in the pan with meat, without meat, with eggs, with all kinds of things. But we have to start off with our, our you know, the, the basic yeah. beginnings, right? I like how you mentioned earlier as sort of a way to clean out your fridge. It's one of those like, well, what do I have that's left over? What can I get rid of? Throw it in your, throw it in your pancake, basically. Yes. All right, so we can just cut this guy up. Say that's about two. I would say it's about two and a half yeah. pack cups. Now, depending on what region of Japan you're in, you'll see different toppings, different ingredients with the okonomiyaki. Is cabbage one constant sort of through it all? It's 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 definitely a constant. But I once again, I really do think this is something that there's no hard and fast rule on. Right. And so I'm from the Tokyo area where they don't really eat okonomiyaki. They go to okonomiyaki restaurants, but right. but if you go to Osaka or to Hiroshima people will really, they'll talk about their feelings and what they love and don't like. And Those are the like two that. regions that are most known for this dish, yes, you'd say. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So now we have our, our veggies here, right? Yeah. And we're gonna take our, our bowl and we're gonna mix our one cup of flour. Yeah. And our... It's actually a very simple... Yeah, it's, ba it's flour, baking powder. Yeah. Okay, look at that. The sugar and the salt is together in one bowl. We're gonna add that too, right? Mm -hmm. Take our little whisk and mix it all around here, right? Always mix up your dry ingredients, right? Otherwise, it might taste funny. All right, now we're gonna do our wet ingredients. One egg, yeah, some water. You know, when I have a, a bigger measuring cup, I just mix everything in the measuring cup and whack it around, you know. There you go. One less thing to clean when you're working in your home Well, kitchen. I live in the burbs, so I have a big kitchen, but my, my friends who live in the city are always looking to have fewer dishes. Me, I don't really care. All right, now you know, with a, you can have a couple lumps with these, you know. You can overwork your dough, so, you know, it's just like pancakes, so you want to be as gentle as you can, right? And we're just gonna add in our cabbits. Right, and we're gonna mix it around. So we got the cabbage and the batter all mixed together. Yeah, very simple. Right, yeah. and uh, 
and that's that really, right? Now, yeah. I mean, if you had carrots or you had zucchini or you had whatever, right? You might add, you know, pull back a little of the cabbage and add in something different. And always keep in mind that something like carrots is really hard. So you, you know, it might cook a little, take a little bit longer to cook, maybe cut a little bit thinner. Right. Okay. All right, so here we are now. We're geared up, everything's, did you believe how fast that was? Easy. Right? I mean, seriously, it was like three minutes? Yeah. I mean, you could make this in three minutes. You know, remember, I'm sure here at Fruit 52, we talk a lot about mise en place. So if you have your mise en place gigged up, then this is a, this is literally like a 15 minute meal. Seriously, it's pretty, okay. you know. So we have our batter made. Mm -hmm. We have our pork belly. You know, in, in, in Asia, getting thinly sliced uh, uh, any kind of meat, beef, pork, lamb, whatever, is very common. Everybody buys it and uses it. Here it can be, that's your biggest obstacle. Yeah. You could always slice your own pork belly or at the butcher, ask yeah. the butcher to slice your pork belly thin. Yeah. So I like to put it into the pan. I like to kind of shingle them in. I think in the cookbook, because I, I say three strips, which is fine, but you could also just do what, you know, whatever size pan you have and, you know, we could just start it like this, you know, it's in right. a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a, a rectangle, but that's fine. It'll flop over. We're yeah. at a low, medium heat at this point. Is right. that what you're looking for? Yeah. The way that we added the pork first at the bottom of the right. skillet, would you ever add vegetables? Or yeah, you know, I was thinking, and I didn't. I, I, I think an interesting thing to try would be like thin sliced uh, zucchini yeah. or thin sliced uh, uh, eggplant. Right. Right. Could also give the same effect. It probably won't. You know, when you shingle meat, it kind of glues together a little bit. So. Mm. It, any raw ingredients here would have to be thinly sliced though because it's cooking for not a very long time. Exactly. I didn't shape the meat too much, right? But we're gonna, we're gonna spread this out, right? Normally it's, it gets to be a little bit of a pancakey shape. So we'll, we'll pancakey shape it a little bit. Yeah. All right. And we didn't add any, fat to this skillet, right? We just use the rendered fat from yes. the pork belly? Yes. Well, I mean, that's the beauty of the nonstick pan, right? You yeah. Really, well, you can add a little oil if you want. It works. With the, with the pork belly, though, look how much things just bopping around there. So now, right, we can just take a look in here, right? And we're gonna look under a little bit. It's still, and remember, you want, you know, when you make a pancake in general, right, you you're looking for little bubbles to come up from the top and the edges to start to cook a little bit. So, right. you know, you want the meat to cook a little bit slow while the bottom of the batter cooks and then you'll flip it and finish it. Now that we hear that nice sizzle, should we turn it down a touch? Sure, turn so it down a touch. We want to slow it down a little bit. While this is cooking, should we talk about the toppings a little bit? Sure. That, the, the, the batter was easy. I feel like the toppings and the garnishes are where the creativity really comes into play. Right. Well, you know, it's where the junkiness comes into play. All this stuff piled on top, you know, <laughs> and it's really fun. Um, so, we have katsuobushi. Katsuobushi is bonito that's been uh, dried and smoked and then shaved. Uh, basically, it's in almost everything in Japanese food. It, you know, when you taste katsuobushi, yeah. you think of Japan. It really, just it's in the da it's what makes dashi, which is katsuobushi and, and kombu seaweed. Mm -hmm. That's the basic soup, and it flavors almost everything you eat in Japan. Um, we mound up the pancake with this on top, and then we also do squiggles of kewpie mayo. Which the difference between this and Hellman's or Duke's is that it's super eggy and really fun and delicious. And once you like it, it's kind of hard to go back. I don't think I've bought a jar of Hellman's in many, many years. Um, and the bulldog sauce, right? The tonkatsu sauce you use for, you know, uh, crispy fried things. And uh, it's, it's sort of a sweet Worcestershire sauce. Hmm. Would you say those three are very typical as far as toppings go? I would say that's the standard topping. All right. So nice we're starting similar. to see a little bit of caramelization now in the bottom yep. of the skillet. We are. Oh, it's looking real nice. nice. Yeah. So we could do it two ways. We could do it this way. Or I could do my way, which is probably. Just flip it. Which is almost perfect. <laughs> okay. What do we, we talked about not worrying about being perfect all the time. Right? Yeah. It's what you were saying earlier, that the shingled meat starts to almost fuse together at, on the bottom of the pancake. Exactly. Really nice. Do some people have preferences for more well done versus lighter color? Uh, referring to the meat? The meat, the pancake itself, like how dark, how caramelized do you want to take it? I mean, I, 
I think that caramelized meat is pleasing. It's, it, I mean, you don't really see it once it's dressed. Right. You're not really looking at the coloring of the meat anymore, but right. I think it, I think it gives it nice texture. I also think because it's pork belly, if it's too under, then it's, it, it has a more of a gelatinous texture to it, which I don't think everybody loves. Yeah. So, um, All right. but, basically you know, it's use your common sense. You it's use your common sense. I mean, that's to me the day, the day you're comfortable enough to make your own call is the day you're a real cook. Yeah. So anyway, the first time I ever made food that I knew was my dish, I was just, you know, thrilled. Yeah. So this is coming along. We'll take a look real quick. You can even peek under the meat and just to check, um, because I have done, you know, as I said, I am fallible. And I have made these before where I did it and then I looked under the meat and it was still, the batter was still wet. Huh. When you're when you're mounding up your batter, yeah. just keep in mind if it's this thick, it will puff up and look cool, but it might also be very rare. So either put the temperature way, way down and let it cook super slow or don't use so much. Right. That, that's why you get that batter on top of the meat when it's still really just starting to cook. Interesting. You let it come together, you flip it, it finishes. It's a really simple dish, but like with any kind of cooking, if you don't pay attention, basically you're ruining food. It's just, <laughs> I mean, I, I think even jello you can mess up, you know, you can mess anything up. All right, so I think we're almost ready to kind of, I think this guy is, I think he's pretty ready. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can just put this on a plate and dress it and then cut it on the plate. But it's easier to cut it on a cutting board. So mm -hmm. if you happen to have a cutting board, you know, you can just carry the whole pan over, yeah. put your spatula up underneath, you know, drop it right down there. Straight from right? the skillet to the cutting board. That's Straight from the how easy skillet is that? to the cutting board. And then, you know, I'm just, you know, we'll wash this when we're done. So let's, let's take our uh, mayonnaise, right? And, and this is just the deal, right? We're just gonna, we're just gonna, Squiggle that stuff all over there. And then it's gonna squiggle this stuff all over here. You can't have too much. You know, you can't have too much ketchup and you can't have too much bulldog sauce, honestly. Right, and then we have our aonori, right? Which is powdered seaweed. And it's got this sort of, sort of really fresh, herbaceous kind of seaweed flavor. It's not too strong and it looks really pretty. Hmm. Right, so you can just sprinkle it on top. Yeah. So there's a lot of savory elements going into this now. It's, you know, it's just so fun. It really is. And then, you, you, you know, using pork belly, you know, I know it's not everybody's favorite cut all the time. It's fatty and stuff, but it adds, it adds an unctuousness and, and it really, it, you know, it, it adds something that a pancake normally doesn't have, right? It has that, that, that fattiness in it, right? And then we're gonna go and grab our, our fish flakes. This looks like something I'd want to have after like a night out of drinking. Is that common too, or is oh, yeah. it more just for dinner? Um, I'd say it's it's more just for dinner, but as I said, I'm from Tokyo, so what do I know? <laughs> they might eat this, uh, right? So this yeah. is it, right? And then we just grab a nice knife and cut through. And it's just like a, a pizza. So now you can grab a hunk. Yeah. How you want to grab and now this is a famous thing too, right? The katsuoboshi on top. Sort yes, of it's kind of dancing, the right? Yeah. You can do that too. It's easy. <laughs> That's beginner stuff. There you go. The katsuoboshi has this nice smoky yep. aroma to it. Yep. Really nice. Yep. So dig in, man. All right. <laughs> really satisfying. Really good. The mayo adds that creaminess, like you were saying. Very good. This is also something you can have friends over, you know, for, for dinner, and you can serve this as a as a pre, you know, a pre thing, or it's great watching the football game. Yeah. It's, it's really easy to make, and when, and if you set it up, so you got your cutting board, your knife, and you just make it and plop them down, and then start another one, and then cut it up and send it out, and it's, I mean, it's really just a pizza, right? I mean, yes. Yeah. It's, it's great for groups because if you have a big batch of batter, let's say you can make four or five pancakes from your batter, you send one out with pork belly, you send another out with zucchini, you send another out with right. like squid or udon noodles. Yeah, you're gonna have absolutely. Whatever you want. It's, yeah. This is great. Thing. So it's a lot of fun. Easy and, and delicious. Yeah. And that sort of gets to the heart of your book. You talk about cookability in the beginning of your book. Some cookbooks, people like to just sort of browse and get inspired. These recipes are meant to be cooked and yeah. that's something I really like. So we've seen the standard, typical okonomiyaki pancake. Now we're gonna show how you can sort of 
add some variety to it, right. customize it, make it your own. Right. Well, you know, this is this is actually a really simple version we're gonna do. My wife said, bring these. So, uh, you know, this is Benny Shoga, which is sort of a, a, it's a ginger, right? Uh, um, colored red. Um, it's not, uh, it's, it's a little different than sushi ginger. Uh, it's a little sharper. Um, it's cut thicker. Um, but when you bite into it, it has this really pleasing sort of burst of, 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 uh, of gingery spice. Can we taste a piece now? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm curious how it compares to the sushi ginger. Oh, it's totally different from the sushi ginger. Um, but uh, this is a very common topping in all kinds of food in Japan. That's what you mean, right. sharper. Yep. Like so, a little more aggressively salty. Yep. And also um, acidic, I guess. So I'm not measuring this out. But why don't you know you guys at home kind of have fun with playing around? You, you could taste it first, and if you love it, put a lot in. If you don't love it as much, and if you hate it, don't put it in. Yeah. Um, and uh, right, so we'll mix it around in here. We probably used about one third of the batter. So I mean, if you, I, I think this recipe can make about three pancakes, roughly. Okay. So I also brought some tenkasu. When you make tempura, you have little bits that float, that come off of the vegetable huh. and that float to the top. And in Japan- In the oil, in the as oil, you're frying something. And you scoop those out and you save them and you can use them for all kinds of applications. You can put them in soup noodles, yeah. you can put them as garnish, and they're That's really cool. nice in here. So that was a tablespoon, I'm gonna do another tablespoon. And when you put this in the batter, it gives you like a little, this little kind of fun crunch. All right, so, we, so we're gonna lay these guys down again, starting to make some noise, right? So. And you added those tempura pieces directly into the yep, batter. Yep, directly into the batter. Do they stay crispy or do they start to- They stayed crispy the other day when I did them, I liked it. All right. Easy, such a great technique. Lay down the pork belly, add the batter on top. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. It's super easy. You can add cheese, uh, you know, at the end, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're just ready to flip it over, yeah. you can add it and then flip it and it'll be nice and crispy cheese on the bottom. Sounds great. You know? Right, so. There we go. All right, so. That looks so good. We'll flip it again and we'll look at the cheese. Yeah. In a couple of minutes. So now that this pancake has the ginger and the tempura batter. Right. Would you still add all the toppings that you added to the first Absolutely. pancake? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, you got that that always goes. Yeah. You, got, you know, it's 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 what makes it taste so good. All right? So we can flip that one more Ooh. time and look at that. Oh my god. Right? Lovely. Yeah. It looks like our our pancake is cooked through, right? Yeah. All right, so we can You know what? Why don't we, why don't we do it cheese side up this time? Mm -hmm. All right? And then we'll go with some topping again. We use Monterey Jack cheese here. Are there any other cheeses that you would use? Well, you know, in Japan, pancake? believe it or not, Japan probably has as good or better cheese than America. But the um, they usually use what they call white cheese, yeah. like cheese from Hokkaido, which basically means it doesn't it doesn't have all that much flavor, but it melts really nice. Right. And uh, so, really melty cheese is nice. Monterey Jack's always a nice option because it's it's a relatively mild cheese. And it, and it melts pretty evenly, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's usually my, my choice, right? So now we have the Benny Shoga, right? We have the Tenkasu, mm -hmm. and we have cheese. So we put a little spin on here, yeah. right? And otherwise we kept it the same. Right? You can just crunch this guy up a little bit, and they're yeah. really fun. You can put more or less, depending on how you feel about it. Everybody is. Now that I know how good the first one tasted, I'm like, can't wait can't for this wait, one. Can't wait, so here yeah. we go. <laughs> All right, Chef, thank yeah, you, you so can much. see if, uh, if there's a big difference or not, yeah? Fun. Mm -hmm. Right? Get the ginger. Probably could have taken more cheese. Yeah, you know what? It, it was subtle there with yeah. all the other big flavors. It looked beautiful. Yeah, it did look beautiful. The combination of all these bold, savory flavors yeah. is just fantastic. It works, right? Oh, it really, it it really works. more than works. Yeah, I mean, really this fun. is a true pleasure to eat. Yeah, and like you said, you could also probably add a little, you know, little tiny ringlets of squid, you know, at the at the end, you know, yeah. or, or yeah. Uh, 
uh, or a shrimp or, you know, there's a lot of, you could really just, if you could just open yourself up and not worry about it. I wish I could just put it in your brain that it's okay. Yeah. You know, because I mean, cause I, I, I'm, I'm in this 30 years and I do worry about it too. But mm -hmm. when I don't and I just let myself go, yeah. I, I, I find it to be so fun, you know? Well, that's great advice. So yeah. I'll post that there. Yeah. Please go to Ivan's restaurants. He has two of them, one on the Lower East Side and then one in Midtown on the yep, West Side. Yep, on Gotham West Market. Yeah. Yep, please do. Yeah. And uh, pick up the book. Remember, the Guy Jean Cookbook. And check out my uh, Instagram, Ramen Junkie. Yeah. I give lots of tips on cooking and on where I like to eat. Chef, this was so much fun. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. For the folks at home, if you're getting creative out there with different toppings, leave a comment. I want to hear what ingredients you're using in your okonomiyaki.